It's probably fair to say that there are three key types of rejection that people may experience within the world of academia, and that's what we'll explore through the rest of this video. Probably the most significant form of rejection is when individuals consider that it's of themselves, they take it personally, but on so many occasions it isn't them, it is the others. Um, I know that sounds a bit of a cliche to say it, but it could be that they've applied for a job that isn't quite right for them yet, or maybe they've uh, submitted an article for publication and when they look back at the feedback they can see that they could have done things differently or better. Of course, it's so easy for us to say, oh, don't take that personally, but look how many people do, especially when we face any form of rejection, and when it first comes, it may hurt. Maybe it's the person's first time to submit an article for publication, and they're now feeling rejected by this. But once you're over the original um, feelings of rejection, time to step away and start looking at it uh, differently. Another significant form of rejection in academia is professional. Maybe you're applying for a job and somebody else is going for it as well. They get it, you don't. But on paper, maybe you've both got the same qualifications and you both meet the criteria. So why did they get it and you didn't? And that gives you an opportunity then to reflect on um, any feedback or feed forward you get from the, uh, the interviewers. And whether you're working towards qualifications, maybe writing a dissertation or a thesis, or preparing for exams, um, or looking for promotion, and looking at ways of disseminating your work, there are so many times where people get knockbacks, but also look at the opportunities for moving forward. For example, Likewise, with writing for publication or submitting abstracts to present at conferences or um, writing research bids, all of these have um, uh, opportunities where some people get through and others don't. But it's not a case of thinking, well, I'm not going to apply just in case I don't get it, but learning from the opportunities, the ones we get through to and also the ones we don't, especially not on first attempt. Of course, life isn't always that easy that we're going to get rejection on one of these key three domains here, but it could be a mix and match from one or more of them. And obviously, when it comes to setting goals uh, for developing ourselves in the future, it's worth looking at the way we want to achieve our goals and breaking it down into the various steps that will enable us to do this more successfully, if not now, then for the future. It's so important not to give up, um, but to um, assess the impact of the rejection and then look at ways of moving forward with it. Maybe you've written an article that just wasn't to the right journal or in the right style or following their guidelines as completely as you could have. So are you going to do this as a second attempt? Are you going to rewrite it and send it elsewhere? There are lots of opportunities, but don't give up. And finally, a term I love saying to so many of my students, maybe I ought not to, but it's e so easy for me to say to them, get a grip. But by that, I mean four particular things. First of all, generate new ideas about your particular project. And if you have been knocked back for whatever reason, be reflexive on it. Um, consider it from different angles and explore insightful ways that you may be able to move forward and redevelop the work or reproduce it in greater, with a greater chance of achievement for the future. Also talk to others, gain the perspectives from your peers. And remember, for most people, success doesn't always come easy. If it did, it wouldn't be an achievement. It needs working at. Good luck.